Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If we differentiate some function y or f of x multiple times, then we call that a higher order derivative. The way we write the first derivative, the most common notations, we'll write the derivative with respect to x of y. We might call that y prime. We might also call the derivative with respect to x of y dy dx. These are different notations that you'll see that mean the same thing, the derivative of y with respect to x. If we then take the derivative again of my y prime, that gives me the second derivative, y double prime. If I think of it as dy dx here, and I take the derivative with respect to x again of dy dx, then we get this notation. This is not actually some variable d squared, and we're not actually squaring x here. This is just the way we write the notation based on the fact that you can see we have d on the top twice, and we have dx on the bottom twice as well. So this d square y over dx square has nothing actually to do with squaring. It's just one of the ways that we write a second derivative. Here you can see our next derivative, our third derivative, if we differentiated a third time, looks like d cubed y over dx cubed. Fourth derivative, d to the 4y over dx to the 4. Again, these have nothing to do with cubing or taking something to the fourth power. This is just how, in the Leibniz notation, we designate a higher order derivative. For the Lagrange prime notation, which is shorter to write, but it doesn't specify what we're taking the derivative with respect to, so this is easier to write quickly, but it's less descriptive than the notation at the top. Our first derivative will be y prime. Our second derivative, y double prime. Notice our third derivative, we have three marks here. That will be y triple prime. And then after our third derivative, we stop writing prime marks, and we just simply, in parentheses, write the order of the derivative that we want. So if these parentheses are not here, this doesn't actually symbolize the fourth derivative. It would symbolize y to the four. But when the four is in parentheses, then we're talking about order of derivatives. So this is the fourth derivative of y here. Our Newton notation, which is on our last row here, it's actually a dot notation. This Newton dot notation is most often seen in science and mechanics subjects, and it's usually a derivative with respect to time. So instead of a dy dx, we might think of this as a dy dt. So y dot here is the first derivative of y, usually with respect to time. y double dot would be the second derivative, y triple dot the third derivative. And then just like with the Lagrange notation, when we stop writing prime marks after the third derivative, we will write a number above the dot so we don't have to count a bunch of dots to figure out what higher order derivative we're trying to take in the Newton notation. Let's do some examples of finding higher order derivatives here other than just the first derivative. So we want to find the first four derivatives of our function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 1 half x squared minus 8x. So our first derivative, I'll go ahead and call that f prime of x. These are power rules, so my 3 comes out front, I get a 6, my power goes down by 1, so that becomes 6x squared, plus I do the same thing with the next term, the 2 comes out front, now 2 times a half will be 1, so I'll just write x here, and then if the power goes down by 1, that would be x to the 1, so again I'll just leave x for that term. The derivative of negative 8x, this is 8x to the 1 here, so 1 comes out front, doesn't change the negative 8. The power goes down by 1, this is x to the 0, so this just really becomes negative 8. So this is our first derivative. Our second derivative, f double prime of x. Again, power rule here, the 2 comes out front now, multiplies the 6, so we'll get 12. This will go down to x to the 1, so just 12x there. Think of this like a 1x here and an x to the 1. The power of 1 comes out, multiplies the 1 that's already there, so really we just get 1 when we do the derivative of x. And then this negative 8 is a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0, so we won't write plus 0 on the end. So this is our f double prime of x here. f triple prime, our third derivative, if I take the derivative of 12x, thinking of this as 12x to the 1, 1 comes out and multiplies the 12. And then the derivative of this plus 1, since plus 1 that's just a constant, the derivative would be 0, and so we just end up with a third derivative of 12. Our fourth derivative, remember when we get this far, we go ahead and write that derivative order in parentheses. It looks like an exponent, but it's not. So that's the fourth derivative of f. 
And if we take the derivative of our 12 here, 12 is just a constant, so actually our fourth derivative is going to be zero. And because this is zero, think about the next derivative would be zero, and every derivative after that would be zero as well, right? But these are our first four derivatives of this function here. Let's do an example of some trig functions here. So we have f of x is sine x. We'll find the first four derivatives. If you've seen our derivatives of sine and cosine video, you probably already know that f prime of x, the derivative of sine x, is cosine x, right? And here asking four derivatives, I think, is particular for this one. So looking at f double prime of x, we would look at now the derivative of cosine x, our first derivative here. The derivative of cosine x, is negative sine x. And then our third derivative would be the derivative of negative sine x. So if we keep this like a multiple of negative 1 in the front, the derivative of sine x we already said was cosine x. So we get negative cosine x for this one. And our fourth derivative, so f, it looks like 4 in parentheses, right? So our fourth derivative of f. The derivative of cosine we know is negative sine, but I already have a negative out front, so we actually get back to a positive sign here, right? This is a nice little pattern that we know that when we start at a sine or a cosine function, just sine of x or cosine x, and we take the derivative with respect to x, after four derivatives we should get back to the function that we started with. Okay everyone, hopefully this helps you with your higher order derivatives. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.